right there. Ouch! He's never gonna have any more trouble! Plymouth Rock. Assalamu alaikum. Mother! Mother! I have them. You must be black dynamite. All in favor, raise your hand. Where he at? Respect? If you can't do that, then go. Get on back to work. Demonstrate, resist. They're gonna kill my children. That means disturb the peace. Please. You better come quick. We ain't slaves no more. I am loyal to the throne. What a drive! We are vegetarian. And that's the Tarut root. Hello, I am Ruth Carter, costume designer to the stars. Um, but I did uh, start a long time ago. And when I was in college, I decided that I wanted to be a costume designer when I tried out for a play and I didn't make the audition. So my teacher, who was the director of the play, asked me if I wanted to do the costumes. And I said, yes. I said, yes, because I had been toying around with the sewing machine in my room as I grew up. And I also loved to draw. So I went to the library and I looked up what a costume designer uh, does and it fit who I felt I was. And so my journey began. Here I am sitting um, on stage in college. I really loved being a thespian. I enjoyed, I enjoyed the stage so much. I wanted to be an actress. And I'm you know, in rehearsal here, probably not unlike some of you who enjoy going through characterization and and the artistic development of a character, uh, finding their arc and immersing yourself in uh, character. I believe that my work as an artist in college actually really helped me quite a bit to understand the, um, the journey of an actor. 
here I am on the set of Black Panther. I'm standing next to the director, Ryan Coogler, and we are examining M'Baku, the leader of the Jabari tribe, who is about to appear on camera for the first time. It's wonderful to be able to present culture and character in the form of costume design. And with M'Baku, we will discover through uh, this lecture how he came about with our inspiration coming from the Dogon tribe. But here I am working away um, in one of the many studios that I put together for film. Uh, many times they're never really big glamorous places. They're cramped small spaces that we have to uh, create in. And you know the environments uh, sometimes aren't optimum, but what is consistent is the love for storytelling. And storytelling is really the difference between fashion and costume. And costume is really the art of creating a character um, through garments, but also um, the art of uh, creating a garment that tells a story. Uh, many people think that I became a costume designer because of uh, Dior or um, fashion design, Barbie, but it was none of those things. Actually, it was uh, James Baldwin Lorraine Hansberry, Sonia Sanchez, Nikki Giovanni. Those were my mentors. Those were my inspirations. Their stories told such vivid tales of Black culture. I was, uh, I was enthralled by them, and I really wanted to bring these characters to life. One day in the 1980s, like in 1987, I met a guy named Spike Lee. And he called me early one morning and he said, Ruth, I said, hello, Ruth, hello, Ruth. I said, yes, this is the man of your dreams. I said, Denzel? He said, no, this is Spike Lee and I want you to do my next film, School Days. So I moved to Brooklyn, New York and I started to design and create the costumes for my first film, School Days. Now I had done so much theater. I knew how to create characters. I knew the character arcs, uh, but I had never built this many costumes and these many characters before. So it was a big task for me. And you know, I cherish the experience. And this is one of our sketches from, from school days. I went to my brother who was an artist and I asked him you know, how to move through these characters on canvas, how to move through the actual design process as quickly as possible. And he guided my artistic um, presentation. I went on to do so many films with Spike Lee, Do the Right Thing, where we use the community of Brooklyn to portray the, uh, the protest film, Do, Do the Right Thing, and all of the elements. Um, this is uh, the late Bill Nunn, who is wearing a bed Do or Die t-shirt that we had painted by a local artist. So it mean, meant a lot to us to involve the community in our community story. I also did the life story of Tina Turner and worked with Angela Bassett quite a bit. And telling that story with Angela was a memory I'll never forget because she immersed herself in character and I immersed myself in costume design. I went on to, to design the story of Malcolm X. And on Malcolm X, I received an Oscar nomination. And this was a transformation for Denzel Washington who went from a um, he went from a ballroom dancer wearing zoot suits to a national speaker. And it was really important for us to portray his life as honestly and as authentically as we could. We had purpose when we, when we did our research and we went through this process. 
I also did a film called Amistad, and that was directed by Steven Spielberg. It told the story of the Amistad Africans who were on one of the last ships that sailed from Africa to, to uh, Virginia. And they, they took over the ship and it was a long court case, but I really wanted to show them in their um, native, uh, their, in their true um, sense because they were not slaves, they were Africans. So I looked up the uh, culture and I saw that many of them would have been Muslim. So we wrapped their hair and we gave them, I felt things that would tell us more about where they came from. And in moving on, it was 10 years, maybe more, I think 20 years later that I won the Oscar for Black Panther. So um, I want to take you a little bit through that journey. We created Wakanda. I'm sure many of you have heard of it. Uh, it sounds a little like Uganda, but it's not Uganda, it's Wakanda. And there it sits in the northern part of Africa. Um, it's right there east of Mali and north of Nigeria, south of Libya. But I have to tell you one true fact, and that is it doesn't exist. You can't take a plane there, you can't go there, it doesn't exist. But it was made up by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby back in the 1960s when there was a lot of civil unrest, the civil rights movement was in effect and they felt like they wanted to create a superhero for the black community. So how did we come up with the stories of Wakanda? How did we come up with the people of Wakanda? Well, we studied so many of the wonderful tribes throughout Africa. There's thousands of them. And we picked just a few to be inspired by our tribes in Africa, in Wakanda, and we gave them names. One would be the border tribe. And they were inspired by the Lesotho people of South Africa, who wear the wonderful blankets and the heart-shaped hats. And they are some of Wakanda's, Wakanda's best warriors and the first line of defense against the outside world. Here they are in their beautiful blankets that were given to them by the king. Well, our director felt that he wanted to use these blankets in a special way. And in that way, he wanted to create a shield out of these blankets by putting vibranium on one side. How many of you have heard of vibranium? Well, we did some illustrations. And in those illustrations, we showed different ways in which we could uh, adorn those blankets. And this illustration is somewhat of a community and, an, and a family. We have our tribal elder in the front, our queen mother to his right, our fierce warriors on the ends and the general community. But when we looked at these illustrations, we thought, this doesn't look like a forward thinking nation. This looks like more ancient and more um, as they were uh, in the past. And since we were creating a forward, more modern Wakanda, we decided to do more illustrations that would incorporate some new ideas. And we did that with all of the tribes that we were inspired by to tell this story. Here we have the merchant tribe. The merchant tribe is inspired by the Tuareg of Mali. And where you see that the women do not cover their faces and the men do. So that makes our tribal elder here in the front a woman. We did the same exercise by showing how modern the Tuareg or the merchant tribe, I should say, modernize their look. And here's how it plays out at the Weir Falls. You see our tribal elder, Connie, with her large Fulani earrings, and she's standing next to her fierce warrior. 
we did the same thing with the mining tribe and they were inspired by the Samburu people of Northern Kenya, the Dinka of South Sudan, the Himba of Namibia, the Maasai of Kenya. You see Shuri, the Panther's little sister, she's wearing beads and corsets that, that that we uh, that we fashioned uh, by the Dinka. And here's how the miners looked uh, in our illustration. We wanted to come up with ways in which they would be mining vibranium. How many have you heard uh, have you have heard of vibranium? Yes, vibranium is the strongest metal known in the world and it's only found in Wakanda all made up. But we have our tribal elder in the middle and we have the queen mother of the mining tribe standing to his side. Here's how it played out at the Warrior Falls. Now we began to mix other tribal inspirations into the idea of the miners and the miners wear this vivid orange. They also, our tribal elder also, wears a himba style hairstyle. And that's the shea butter and the rich clay soil mixed and adorned in the hair. Some people think it's worn uh, that way as they put the shea butter on their skin and on their, on their bodies. And people think it's for antiseptic reasons because of long droughts or to ward off mosquitoes. It's none of those things. It's just beauty. They love the way they look that way. And I think it's outstanding. Standing next to Connie is her fierce warrior who's inspired by the Maasai. Now, if you follow the comics, you'll know that at tribal council, there is a elder in a Maasai headdress, very large Maasai headdress. And I was prepared to put this look in tribal council, but Ryan, our director, didn't want it there. He actually wanted the man with the lip plate instead. So when we got to Warrior Falls, I felt like there was an opportunity for me to put the Maasai headdress there. So I went to Pier 1 Imports and I bought myself a beaded placemat and I cut a hole in it. And then we painted it and we adorned it with feathers and fur and we got our Maasai headdress in the film for about 20 bucks. Here is the Golden Tribe and the Golden Tribe is inspired by the Zulu tribe of South Africa, the most powerful tribe of Wakanda. Their technology has developed far ahead of the rest of the world. And it's the tribe of the royal family. Here's how we started our illustration based on some of the tribal customs and celebratory looks. We have our tribal elder and our queen mother. And then we modernized the look just so we could give them a, a look where we're not showing Wakanda as some place that doesn't move ahead. Wakanda is a place that moves forward and has great technology. The artisan tribe. The artisan tribe were inspired by the Turkana people of Kenya, the most traditional of all the tribes responsible for pottery, textiles, and the arts. So how could you not use as much of the beautiful beading and artistry that surrounds many places in Africa to create this look for these tribes. And you notice we have also added the modern looks. There is the river tribe. The river tribe was based on the Sami and the Suri of Ethiopia and the Wajenya of Congo. So we combined uh, many inspirations from around the central and southern part of Africa. And we really did love the look of the Suri children and how they playfully adorn their hair and their faces. We also modernized and took a few artistic liberties with the Wajania look 
and the stick fighters. I was just enthralled by some of the ways that they adorned themselves with, with armor and in really unique ways. Nakia, who is played by Lupita Noyango, is from the River Tribe. We presented two looks for Nakia. On your right, you see she's inspired by the Hamar tribe with the skins that are beaded and the cowrie shells that go around the neck. Really beautiful look. And then on the left, you see Nakia in a totally made up costume that does have many elements from the Suri children. And that's the one we chose to create. Here's how it played out at the Warrior Falls. You see Nakia adorning her warrior look based on the, the Suri children. And next to her is her tribal elder with complete with his lip plate and his costume is completely made up. And so we get to our royal family and we see them all together in a, in a photograph like this. We took this photograph during shooting and it was the first time that the whole cast got together in one place in costume. And this was an exciting day for me. I looked to my left and to my right and I wondered if anybody else was excited as I was about costume design and storytelling. In this photograph, you see Zuri in purple and he is the tribal priest. He is the high priestess of Wakanda and he adorns many of the tribal language that we put in the costume. He has Mali, he has neck rings, he has a tabard. Next to Zuri uh, is Wakabe, the leader of the border tribe. And he's adorning the Lesotho blanket and his chest piece that is made of vibranium. Above Wakabe is Killmonger. Killmonger, who returns to Wakanda to defend his rightful, rightful place to the throne. Below Killmonger is Nakia. Nakia with her ring blades and her, she is the fierce warrior of the river tribe. Below Nakia is Okoye. Okoye is the leader of the Dormelage, the general, the, the highest ranking fighting force female fighting force of Wakanda. Below Okoye is Shuri, the little sister of the Black Panther and the leader of the, the, the Wakandan design group. She actually designs the suit. Above, above Shuri is Queen Ramonda, the queen mother of Wakanda. And she's standing next to the late great Chadwick Boseman as the Black Panther. So let's quickly talk about some costume design. Here we have Wakabe in his Lesotho blanket. These are the illustrations that are done for costume design early in the process. We, we present all of these costumes to Marvel. We, we, we present these sketches and they look through them and they decide which costumes they like the best and which ones we're going to make. You can see on Wakabe's blanket, we have illustrated vibranium in the form of letters and things on the uh, inside portion of his blanket. Here you see the palace guards, you see another uh, design for the Dora Milaje, you see a design for Shuri. But let's begin with the panther suit. When I first saw the, the suit that was presented, in Captain America Civil War, I thought to myself, this, it was on a mannequin, it was in my office, just kind of stiff. And I thought, this is not what I expected from this, the Black Panther costume. I expected a little bit more something. And so I asked Chadwick Boseman to come in my office and put the suit on, and he did. And when he put on that suit and he began to stretch and do his karate stances, I was amazed. It really had magic. When he put on that, had that the mask 
and it became the Black Panther. It was no longer Chadwick Boseman. I was in awe. And then Chadwick said, well, you know, I can't breathe out of my nose in this helmet, and I can't lift my arm above, above the, a certain height. So I thought that will never do. So we went on to um, build the Black Panther costume, and we paid particular attention to the areas of the face and the helmet so that he could actually breathe and he could actually lift his arm. It started with a muscle sculpt where we create the muscles for the Black Panther suit. We, we uh, vacuum form them and we paint them silver so they represent vibranium. But there was one particular thing that we did to the Panther suit that was really special. And that was we created the surface texture in the form of a triangle. And for us, the triangle was like a sacred geometry of Africa. It's a, it's, a, it's a shape that you see in so much of the artistry. We called it the Okavango Triangle, named after the long Okavango River. And the triangle had a meaning for us that was of the family, the father, the mother, and the child. We also had to come up with different ideas for the for King T'Challa to wear as he moved around the the city of Wakanda and ruled over Wakanda. Um, and so here we have what was inspired by the Nigerian senator, senator suit. And the uh, Nigerian senator suit has the wonderful um, embroidery around the neck and down the front. It's usually a tunic and a pair of very simple pants but we put the embroidery around a tailcoat just to give him a little bit more formality. We also created the crown for Queen Ramonda. Now in the comics, Queen Ramonda does wear the Ishikolo. The Ishikolo is the married woman's hat, South African married woman's hat, as you see in red on your left. So we created the design and then we decided to 3D print it. So it would be perfect. We needed the queen's crown to be a perfect sphere that maybe had some folklore that the center faced the north, that the sides faced you know, east-west. And it really meant a lot to me that we would use this technology that was forward thinking for the queen. We also 3D printed her shoulder mantle. Now the shoulder mantle you see here in the colors is how many pieces are printed in the big uh, 3D printing machine. And it comes to us in many pieces and we take it to our workshop and we glue it together and then we um, actually paint it. So here's how it looked in uh, our film. On your left, you see she was standing completely in blue screen, but in the movie on your right, you see she's standing in Wakanda. So I told you a little bit about the blankets, the blankets that were that came from the Lesotho people of South Africa and how we printed vibranium on one side. And when Marvel saw these blankets, they liked them, but they thought they were too heavy. And so at the last minute, we had to shave all the blankets with a men's razor just to make them thinner. And we had about 150 blankets. Then we sent a video to Marvel that would show how these blankets actually now are thinner after they're shaved and they have their vibranium on them. So they are shields. And once they saw our video, they approved the blankets. The Dora Milaje, the, the highest ranking female force in Wakanda, Dora Milaje means the adorned ones. And these young women are the king's bodyguards. Here's how we created their costume. On your right, you see the costume illustration that was done by Anthony Francesco of the Marvel Design Group. On your left, you see the comics and they're quite different. Their costumes are quite different in the comics. And that's because Ryan Coogler, our director, really wanted them to be seen 
seriously in uniform and and all of their vitals covered because they're fighters, not cheerleader skirts and bikini tops, but actual costume design that would represent many areas of Africa. So we started with the Maasai and I, I thought we need to bring up the red. We need to show this beautiful, vibrant red of the Maasai. And then we went to the Himba, the Himba women who adorned themselves with the shea butter and the clay and they put it in their hair and on their bodies. And also they take the calfskins and they stretch and adorn the calfskins and create costumes. We took all of those elements and we, have, we turned the illustration that was done by Anthony. We turned it forward. We added all of these elements to this costume, including beadwork. And as you know, beadwork is a very, um, a very common artistic uh, element of Africa and has several meanings. So this is how our costume came about. We, we created a tabard, we created the himba leather that, that centered around the body and honored the female form. Also, there was a back skirt that the leather was stretched and adorned in the same way that the himba women do. The Turkana tribe was our inspiration for the beadwork. And we also had um, a scarification. So we wanted to show different ways, different ways of showing beautiful beauty. Escarification is a form of beauty. And we took the neck rings and the shoulder armor and we, we put a high sheen on them. We, we plated them so they would look like jewelry. And this is a Koye as the Dora, the leader of the Dora. So you see how you can take culture and apply it to a superhero model. And that is called Afro future. I mentioned Mbaku, who is the fierce warrior of the Jabari tribe. You might remember him in the film. And he says, we are vegetarians. Well, we wanted to honor him and his, his character from the comics in a, in a beautiful way. Uh, you know, they, um, they honor the silverback gorilla. And in the comics, uh, you know, he has a gorilla face and it's, it's very derogatory and, you know, the sign of the times. So we decided to give him a, a more honorable costume. And we put the silverback fur on his back like a cape. And the cape was silver tipped, but very hard to stay on his shoulders. We tried everything, and the only thing that would keep that cape up there was refrigerator magnets. And then once we put the refrigerator magnets and they, it stuck, it stayed, and it was very hard to get off. But they are inspired by the Dogon of Mali, the Dogon. They were one of the first astronomers, and they have a celebration to the solstice. And once... Ryan Coogler saw images of their celebration and their grass skirts. He thought, then the Jabari should wear grass skirts. And this is how we started our creation of the grass skirt for, for Mbaku, who was the leader of the Jabari tribe. We sent this video to Ryan and to Marvel to show how the grass skirt would work. and it was approved. This is how it played out at the Warrior Falls. Shuri, who is the little sister to T'Challa, creates the Black Panther suit. So she works in a lab. And because of her youth, I didn't want her costume to be, oh, like a lab coat and boring because she's so young and so ingenious. So we gave her overlays. Most of her costumes had wonderful overlays like the organza sweater you see on your left and the sheer netting that you see on your right. And those were her protective layers. So we created Afro Future with the Black Panther costumes. 
we took technology and we infused it in a superhero model. And this is how it all came together. Thank you, Ruth, so much for that amazing presentation. At this time, we're gonna take a few questions from some students. And what part of the film process does the costume designer start to get involved with the film production process? It really depends on um, what director, what the director wants. When I work with Spike Lee, he sends me the script way before we start our process. Um, he really wants me to start thinking about these characters early. Um, and so I feel like I'm one of the first part people to get started right in line with the production designer. But on Black Panther, I was, I came in um, to Marvel. I'd never done a superhero film before. And you know, Marvel is like the CIA, you know, everything is top secret. Um, and I met with Ryan Coogler and Hannah Beekler and Nate Moore, who was the producer and the production designer. So they were on long before I was. And as I walked into the office, I saw images all over the walls and I saw development in place. And I really felt like I needed to catch up. Um, so it's nice when you can come on as early as possible. Sometimes in, in um, independent films, you come on much earlier than you might in a studio film. Okay. What would you say are some skills needed um, for being a costumer for film and television? Um, um, you have to be able to imagine the characters and see them in a, in a way that's achievable. Um, so if we said, oh, I'm imagining these characters flying in on a spaceship and getting out and their costumes morph into different things, you might not be able to achieve that. So when you read their, your script, you're, you're thinking about, you're imagining this world and you're Im imagining, imagining it in a way that you can achieve it. And, and it's not to say that you shouldn't think outside the box and, and shouldn't bring innovative ideas into it because maybe that spaceship idea morphs and changes as you go along and as you read your script again and as you start doing your, your illustrations. But at some point you have to really take imagination and research and apply it to a, a real 3D form. You've got to create these characters. And so I think imagination is very important. I agree, love that. How did you, um, in the film Black Panther, how did you stay true to the comic book and true to the African culture while you were creating the movie? Yes. Well, the comics actually did uh, provide a free space, a safe space, because when you looked at the comics, you saw Maasai, you saw Indibele, you saw Turkana, you saw all the tribes of Africa represented. So I, I was joyous when I looked at the comics because it gave me an entry to the creativity that I was gonna experience, but they're little tiny boxes. They're small boxes. So, you, so detail is not there. So you get a general and broad sense, but a good sense of what Wakanda should be like. And so it was an opportunity for me when I applied it to the costumes to show all the majesty, all the detail, all the, all the different areas. It was, it was like a, a love letter, an open book to creativity. Nice. Can you explain the time that you had to make a hard decision or fight for your point of view to be um, seen or heard? Yes, um, you have to trust your voice. You have to feel things in your heart. 
Um, but as artists, sometimes we have to let go because this is a collaborative medium. It's not that you're on your own island doing everything your way and everybody else is in a separate area. We're really actually collaborating. And so if you open your mind to things that may not, may not agree to what you thought it would be, actually, you might learn something. You might learn something new. And the new idea might open up an avenue that's even bigger than the first one. So I always say, you know, be open to the ideas of your collaborators, because every time someone hears a note or they read a story or they listen to what's going on, each person will interpret it differently. Each person will hear something different. So not getting your way or not having your special idea in the film is, is not terrible. You can store it and use it on another film or use it in another way. Um, but the collaboration is a bigger, bigger payoff for you. Nice. What part of costuming brings you the most joy? Um, I think um, I get very excited about culture. And um, when I first started out and I was doing Malcolm X, I, I went to the Department of Corrections and I got his files where he was in prison for a short time of his life where it was a transition for him. And I wanted to know more about that transition. And so I was excited to read his letters that he wrote. I saw his whole file, his whole history. And it was firsthand from him. It was like he was telling me about his life. Also on Amistad, I wondered how these Africans from Sierra Leone, how they, how it was, what it was like for them on that ship. And so I had no other um, writings except for the cargo list, what was the, the ship carrying? Because they were carrying not only Africans, they were carrying goods, blankets, materials, food. So when they mutinied the ship, I said, well, they're gonna adorn themselves. They're gonna put those blankets on their bodies the way that they would in their homeland. It was, we were already in Americas and the Eastern seaboard, it was cold. They would wrap their heads. So that's how I told their story. And I get very excited about the research portion that gives me a clue to the, to the real story, the truth of the story, what could have really happened. Mm -hmm. What would you say is your greatest achievement thus far for you? My greatest achievement thus far for me is not only winning the Oscar, um, but also being, um, being told that people of Africa loved Black Panther. And I was representing their culture in costume design and not being African of African descent. And, you know, when we go through our research and the history books, it's so easy to misrepresent. And so the accomplishment of, of authentic representation um, means the most to me. Nice. When creating Black Panther, did you get a chance to actually visit the continent of Africa? And if so, what parts did you visit? Well, I went to Africa after we shot Black Panther. Um, I researched uh, the tribes through the history books because we were um, basing the costumes on the ancient indigenous uh, tribal customs and technologies that they were using and, and bringing it into a superhero form. So if I had actually gone to Africa to research all of those details, I'd still be there right now. 
But uh, I had known so much by the end of Black Panther. When I did my vacation, I went to Johannesburg to the first Afropunk celebration there. I went to Cape Town and I just laid back and just enjoyed myself. And then I went up into the bush on a private like safari and I immersed myself again in the culture um, and had a just beautiful time. I was there for like six weeks. Nice, nice. And this is going to be our last question. Um, Are there any resources, books, films that you would recommend to a future costumer that will help them learn storyboarding, character tone and mood? Um, I think first, there's a couple of um, programs that are good to learn. One's called Costume Plot Pro. Another one is called um, Sync on Set. Um, And those are tools. Um, As far as breaking down costume design, it's good to um, look into costume um, books. There's one called Hollywood Costume. There's another one called What They Wore. Um, You know, you can Google things and get basic knowledge of costume design. But character, there's no manual for the imagination that is involved when you're coming up with a costume design for a character. There's no roadmap. It's completely subjective. It's whatever you experienced in your life and you think that this character should be. So I would um, read, I would observe, I would, you know, live your life and be a people person, understand what what makes people make the decisions that they make and, and what happens as they go through their lives. You really do have to love people and their differences. Awesome. I would like to thank you firsthand for one being my mentor yeah. and the Academy for matching us together and having this conversation with me. So just thank you for your time. Thank you, Lachelle. I enjoyed uh, taking you through uh, the creation of Black Panther and a little bit of my story. And and hopefully it will inspire you uh, to create costume design for film. You know, I enjoyed infusing African culture into the superhero model. I enjoyed being a messenger of authenticity with tribal culture and modern technology. So um, good luck to you. I wish you the best and Wakanda forever. <laughs>